most of you know that it is thanks to the love and support of this community that we were able to build a village for special needs children out in Tanzania. That village now provides a safe and loving home to nearly 200 children that were living in crisis. Most of these children are special needs, but a lot of these children were homeless and the majority have no parents or guardians in this world other than the family that this community has allowed us to create. Everything that we do is made possible thanks to partners. Those who choose to partner with our family and with it make everything that we do possible and keep our doors open for the next children who need some help or a safe and loving family home. If you'd like to hear more about our partnership programme, you can do so by visiting www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership. Thank you for all of the love and support, guys. We couldn't do this without you. I know many of you have heard about the 1111 phenomenon. And I know for many of you, this supernatural and spiritual manifestation is occurring in your life. And if you have not heard about it, I would ask you to stay with me because the, the voice of God manifests itself in many ways. God is not limited by time, space and matter. All of these thing, three things must come into existence together for them to have meaning. And therefore, the creator of them is beyond them, transcends them and is throughout them. And I know that the source code of all creation has multiple ways to talk to us as human beings. It can come clairaudibly, it can come in visions and dreams through another human being, synchronicity, meaningful coincidence, and indeed this numerical synchronicity is one of them. And I have a story that I will share shortly, which shows exactly who is behind this synchronicity. You see, as sentient life, what I've come to learn is that there is a unified field and all of us can access or harmonically attune to this unified field. And that unified field is the bridge between humanity and the source code between humanity and God. In Christianity, that bridge between humanity and God is said to be the Holy Spirit. And I believe the Holy Spirit to be the unified field that I'm speaking of here. And I also am quite certain that we must harmonically attune with our behaviors, with our uh, prayer, with our meditation to the Holy Spirit to be able to hear the will, the voice and the direction of Creator. And so this unified field is accessible by all, but humanity out of all of the many species on this planet are the best example of what can happen when you disconnect from that unified field. When you lose harmonic resonance and attunement with it, you become very selfish and self-absorbed. As a species for all we live in unity in this world, we have collectively told one another that to live for self, to live for ego, is the right path. And it's clearly not. And so we do not think of others before self, and we are not educated by our schooling system, etc. to think of others before self. And indeed, our leaders, our government, our, our positions of power rarely bring that message forward, to think of others before self. This unified field that we can all access, it is harmonically attuned to, whereby we connect to it via a word that many don't understand, and that is silence, stillness. You see many, the image that comes up is sitting in a room with nothing going on, with perhaps boredom. This is not silence. The silence that I am referencing is not a void, an absence from the doing of life. It's a harmonic attunement to the unified field and with it, the birth of your vital life, the birth of your destiny comes from that awakened silence. 
There is a light born in your life from that silence. And you see that silence is not forced by you, it's not pursued by you. Because what happens there is that when we try to force silence, we take an image inside of us, a personal history and a personal identity we've built in thought. And we try to make that bring us to silence. The silence that I am speaking of is the absence of that personal identity and the personal history. It is a new, therefore, operating system for the majority of us awaken every morning and we begin analyzing, plotting and planning what we are going to do today. And in that space, mind is the master. And if mind is the master, then silence is not. Silence must be the master because the unified field should be the master. The creator, the Holy Spirit, should be the one that is the operating system for your life as a bridge to the source code. The reason we are not accessing there is because the majority of us don't grasp this concept of awakening silence. This silence is a place inside you that is untouched by the world, that is unblemished by the world, that has not been harmed by the world. And this silence, your awareness can rest in its safety, in its protection, even in a noisy room, even in a busy city center, that silence, that stillness within you can be the point whereby which your conscious awareness resides. And that means that even sometimes when the mind is busy trying to solve a situation that you are in, that you can still remain in that silence with a busy room and a busy mind because you stay anchored in that place. Now, biblically it says, because this is important for 1111, Biblically it says that you must die and Christ be born. And so it is referencing that space of the mind being master. It must die so that a new master can come. But who is that new master? If you look at what that is to be a personal me, it means that you have made a center inside of you. And that center is an image of who you believe you are based on your personal history, your memories, and what culture and life has told you or traumatized you into. And so you have this image of who you are and it's a center point. And this center point is a great hurdle to bringing great love to the world. Because if somebody hurts you or does something that you do not like, you will centralize it and be a victim of their actions. Now, if you have no center and they do something, then there is no victim to bring forward into itself the pain of that doing externally. And at that moment, you overcome the world. When you have no center point, you overcome the world. And therefore, if there is no center, if you are having no personal, psychological, centered beingness, no personal history and personal self, then how on earth do you operate? Where do you operate from? Well, you operate instead from unity. Centered is separation. A centered self will analyze the world, meaning you create an analyzer in you and a subjective analysis outside. The operating system we want is access to the unified field, which is filled with the compassion and the love of source. That unified field of the Holy Spirit requires you to have no center, no religious identity, no spiritual identity needs to be present when that Holy Spirit or when that unified field is speaking through of to the life that you are living. The unified field becomes your operating system. It becomes the operating system and there, as there is no center point, then, as the leaves are blowing in the wind behind me, you look at them and you say, is the leaf moving in the wind or is the, the wind moving through the leaf? And you stop and you recognize neither is true. That is, and my mind is moving in duality. 
my mind is dualistically moving to determine the isness of the unity. And so in that same space of entering a harmonic attunement with the unified field, you begin to completely change your relationship with life and with it, God. For if not, you will spend your life pursuing, chasing externally, trying to make this relationship stronger. But even in the pursuit of change of behavior, any alteration in behavior that brings you closer to the source code, to the unified field, which is the bridge to the source code, the Holy Spirit to God, is still harmonic attunement to that unified field. When you alter your behaviors to live a more pure life, your frequency becomes in an, a, a likened resonance with the generous heart of God that is pouring forth all creation and the unified field within it. When we are attuning to this place, we are given a great energy. We are given a new capacity because now instead of being separated from it, you wake up and instead of analyzing, you analyze your life, your plans, you have your own desires, self-will. Now instead of analyzing the unified field, you wake up and you attune to the unified field. This is your goal now. Your whole structure of life changes. Now as you start your day, your goal is to attune to that unified field to access your joy, your energy and its will and direction for your life. When you enter that state of harmonic resonance with the Holy Spirit, you feel the love expanding, the energy being given to you within there. If you do not have that, you will constantly pursue the notion of God instead of attuning to the presence of God. And there is a big difference. When you learn this and you learn the practice of attuning to the unified field, it is there that you begin to awaken the voice and the guidance, for it is there that you are present. You see, you were educated to recall information from your memory and chase a result in the future. And that movement from memory to future, past to future, is a very persistent one. And so persistent that it creates the personal image and the personal self and the personal history within there. And that movement is so frequent, your awareness believes you are that movement from past to future. But attunement to the unified field in harmonic resonance with it is in the middle of that movement here and now in the presence. And so we are educated to take us away from uniting with the unified field and it creates a completely different type of human being. It creates a human being that is sovereign in their identity with the state or with the ruling elite. Whereas if you come away from that movement and the programming of perception of the self that you've been given, then your identity becomes sovereign in your creator. For you harmonically attuned to the unified field, which you are a part of, an extension of. In the movement from past to future, that extension is still present, but you can't hear the unified field's will. Your own will becomes dominant. When we, as human beings, find the attunement instead of the running, there we awaken certain new capacities. For now, instead of analyzing the unified field, you are plugging in and bringing it forward into human shape and form. It's immense love, compassion, it's wisdom, it's direction for your life, your destiny comes when you plug into it, not when you look at it and analyze it with your mind. And that plugging in happens in the silence, as I mentioned, the inner silence where the personal you, you have died and Christ is born, where the ego is not the master. Mind is a dreadful master, but a wonderful servant of the unified field identity that we all have. When that happens, the voice of God can be heard. <clears throat> and that voice can come clear audibly. It can come visions, dreams, synchronicity, other human beings. It can come from other humans connecting to it and then writing it down and you reading it. 
but it also can come in numerical synchronicity. And the interesting thing about this is that for many that is necessary due to our cultural programming. If you look at what I said about this movement of mind that we are encapsulated with, we are enchanted by that movement and believe it's who we are. To get you to stop moving from memory to future and this chase of the world which it leaves you in. You see, when you do that, you feel a void of energy because you're not harmonically attuning to the unified field. And in that void of energy, you look for it in the world and you get chained to often the perversions of the world. And you believe that if you just fulfill your worldly desire, then you'll have your energy, your joy, your happiness. But it's not. It's when you overcome the chase of worldly desire and harmonically attune in that silent state where the, the desire keeper, the personal me and its personal history, is absent, that you get your joy, you get your contentment. Freedom is not fulfillment of worldly desire, it's overcoming the desire for worldly desire ultimately and then connecting and you still have pleasure, you still have joy. It's only now you are doing it whilst you are living out your life purpose. The very reason that you are created is revealed into the intelligence you are through unity with the unified field. And so initially in that movement you are unlikely to attune you're unlikely to pause and, and harmoniously align with that field. And so all of a sudden, this numerical synchronicity can start coming up. And it's trying to capture your attention. It's clicking its fingers. The unified field, as an extension of God, is clicking its fingers at you. It's saying, come on, look at me, please. Now, when that happens enough, it can have an immense breakthrough and shake the personal identity, the cultural you, the worldly you, and the spiritual you can be born, the mind as master. Sometimes the mind is logical, and if it sees that something supernatural is going on, it can be enough for the, the, the existence of that thought-based self to be shaken. In my own life, as this human sitting here talking, I can tell you how vastly important this numerical synchronicity is. I, many years ago, was living a different life. I was thinking only of self and not other. In that space, I fell on my knees after years of taking drugs and I, everything wrong with my life was wrong. And I felt numb and void and empty and I fell on my knees and said for the first time since being a child, God, if you are there, help me. Nothing happened. <laughs> there was no big change. But all of a sudden, that number kept showing up in my life. I would take a nap, wake up, it was 11.11. I would look at the time, it was 11.11. I would receive emails and messages that had great meaning and significance to me at 11.11. And it took months and months of this going on before I eventually realized that there has to be something that I don't understand here because this level of coincidence is mathematically impossible by now. And I went through all the notions, it was confirmation bias, and the result of this story that I'm finishing now shows you it's not. You see, it is the source code speaking to you, for you have attuned and aligned. Freedom from this analyzer, this arrogant analyzer, has aligned you harmoniously with the source code and it's wanting to get your attention. And I, as a result of this, began to look at spirituality, religion, God. And it was enough to shake that personal meanness, this structure in my head that thought it had everything sorted, this ego state that didn't have a spiritual essence about it or a spiritual vision about it. It was shaken enough by this 11.11 that I began to explore spirituality. And I looked at prayer, fasting, meditation, and I began to try to seek, at first, the origin of where this communication may be coming from. And in time, as I did things that I should not be doing, other numbers were showing up. The same numbers were sh showing up. And I realized that sometimes when I was doing things that were not in line with my best good, that these numbers were showing up that were not 11.11, but the same one over and over. And 
I saw prayer meditation now as a way to try and tune in to wherever it was coming from wherever this guidance was coming from I wanted to tune in and I understood prayer and meditation was doing that and then fasting well in some time I I pursued with all of my power a tuning to wherever was speaking and I decided on the 11th of November 2011 that I would do a water fast and in that fast I saw some children on a video on YouTube in Uganda who was suffering immensely and I called out and said someone should do something and this was the first clear audible interaction with God and the voice said you are someone I applied to volunteer and this organization's name was village to village but they were in Uganda and there was another organization in Tanzania that had the same name and I applied to the one in Tanzania by accident, but it was the will of the unified field. It was the source code's plan. For when I applied to the Tanzanian one, they replied to me at 11.11 a.m. on the final day of my water fast and invited me to go and help out in their projects. Those times in my life when I did finally go and followed where this was taking me I went to that part of the world with no money no experience and having never left Europe and I went blindly following this guidance which I believed was from the spiritual realm and was asking something of the man that I was and I witnessed that everything it was asking was making me a better and more loving man and so I surrendered to it. Now in time, of course, I've now grown to be able to hear the voice of God, etc. But if you are seeing 1111, it is not a gimmick. It's not something to make a new identity out of. It is a call for you to yield the personal history and the personal self to the plans of the unified field. And I can say this, that arriving in that country with no money and no experience that what happened next is my evidence that whoever you are experiencing this take it seriously and know that this is a manifestation of the voice of a great love and that love is God and it has a plan and a calling for your life and you have no idea where that will take you because the day that I received that email I had zero want to go to Africa until that week. Now, to fast forward to where we are, this is what happened, and this is where we are going. I just, I can't stand seeing the children like that. It's just, it's a gut wrenching. It, it breaks my heart. In 2015, after relentlessly working to help alleviate the human suffering he witnessed in Tanzania, John St. Julian opened the doors to Feathers Tail Children's Village for disabled children with the help of countless kind hearted humans following his journey on social media. Years later, Feathers Tail has been an incredible success story for the 100 plus special needs children with disabilities who now have a chance to thrive for the first time in their lives. Feathers Tail proved that eradicating the suffering of all special needs children was in fact possible with the power of love. John and his team decided to embark on their most ambitious project to date a new all-encompassing children's village that will become the blueprint to eliminating the suffering of people born with special needs in the entire country and beyond. I want to take just a few moments of your time to share with you an exciting project. People all over the world connected very deeply to this mission and took action to help. It's just phenomenal. All I can say is thank you and Please keep being awesome. The world needs it and these children need it. The fundraiser was the biggest success to date. So much so that the village is now under construction 
providing labor to locals who can be rewarded fairly for their hard work. Due to the lack of intervention, education, and stimulating activities, many disabled children have been severely limited in their mental and physical growth potential. Many never learn to speak or walk. The new children's village will contain a therapy center at the heart of the village, where children will receive a wide range of high quality physical and cognitive therapies and activities using advanced equipment, providing them with around the clock support from qualified personnel, such as caregivers, medical staff, and physiotherapists. Surrounding the therapy center, there will be four children's homes with the capacity to house 396 special needs children. Each of the homes will be made up of three separate buildings with the capacity to house 33 children in each one. Each building will include four large bedrooms, two large washrooms, and a daycare hall. In each children's home, there will be a roofed communal therapy area where the special needs children will have access to private therapies and group activities. There will be two spacious communal kitchens right next to the four children's homes where they will receive their meals and socialize with other adults and children. The new children's village will take advantage of Tanzania's sunshine and use solar panels on the rooftops to be as energy independent as possible. The village's inhabitants will be able to avoid the strongest sun due to the pergola walkways and various other covered areas. A vocational center will also be created where the special needs children get the best education possible and will be taught skills best suited for their particular disability, giving them the best chance of succeeding in their adult professional lives. Disabled children are often forced to spend time in isolation for hours on end, sometimes even chained up to prevent them from hurting themselves while the parent goes to work to put food on the table and to survive. To tackle this very issue, the new children's village will be home to a community of single parents with special needs children. Each family will live in self-contained, disability-friendly houses. This provides safety and privacy for the family, while still providing full access to the village's medical care and facilities. The single mothers will also have access to education and employment opportunities, such as caring for other special needs children without parents. These mothers are often the most qualified people to do so, having raised a special needs child themselves. Monica has severe malnutrition, uh, the worst case we've ever had. Monica is four years old, but she only weighs four kilograms. Malnutrition is commonplace in Tanzania. UNICEF estimates that around 54% of children under five years had stunted growth. Therefore, permaculture will be a focus inside the new children's village. We aim to be as self-sufficient as possible, not to depend on external factors for food availability to meet the children's nutritional needs. We have been blessed with the opportunity to start this project, but our mission is still far from over. We're working around the clock to gather more funds to proceed to the next phase so we can help these humans as soon as possible. If you feel connected to this project and want to become a part of this important mission, visit www.sharetanzania.com dot com forward slash invisible children and learn how you can directly impact the lives of these people today thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more updates